Join us always by my friends, Allison and Chris. You can find them on the internet. But to find them on the internet, you need to go to binaryjazz.us to find their Twitter handles and websites and ancillary products. Um, we're glad you're here on this uh, beautiful internet day. Joining us, talking about, well, that remains to be seen what we're talking about. Stuff. It's kind of how we roll. We're glad you're back. If you're joining us, this might be the right episode to start with. <laughs> Only time will tell. Yeah, it's too early to say. <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst episode to start with. <laughs> well, well I mean, that, wasn't really it. At, that wasn't meant to be a dig at our previous episodes. It's just, I mean, there's not, I just, there's not a bad time. I wonder what, what, what the worst episode to start with. I was going to frame it the other way, which is yeah. be the oh. best entry point. <laughs> um, Dyson Sphere, I think, would be the best. Dyson Sphere. Because you would understand, or like the next forty-three episodes after that, <laughs> it all harkens back to Dyson Sphere. All revolves around the Dyson Sphere, the center of the gravitational pull of binary jazz, as it were, the Dyson Sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um. So, what would what do you think would be the best episode to start with, Allison? Um, yeah, you're you're a fan. <laughs> uh, I still really like the cryptozoology episode. That was very early on, no? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe fairly fairly early on. Third, fourth, pretty mm-hmm. early on. Um, I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to go through the archives. <laughs> that, there's a project. How how long would it take for you to listen to every episode? I mean, not you personally, but a person, if they wanted to go and listen to the back catalog at this point, would take... Okay, so there's 44 episodes, I'm because I can see, I'm looking at the list. There's 44 episodes, each episode so, is roughly 40 minutes. So yeah, so let's 44. just say somewhere in the neighborhood of like 33 hours. That's a lot of content. Having not really said anything. But valuable, <laughs> valuable. <laughs> You're so much more optimistic than me today. I, yeah, which is shocking because it's not where I'm at this week at all. But yeah, that's about thirty hours of listening to us nonstop. That's quality. Some people go out of their way to hear us talk in person. So the fact that people can just get it streamed to their device makes it that much. I don't know where I'm going with this. And we don't even charge for it. <laughs> not that we charge for our other speaking engagements, Gary. Well, that's a valid point. Do you think less people would show up if we charged for it, like our speaking engagements? Oh, I was like, are people showing up for this? <laughs> <laughs> That's not really a thing we keep track of, nor should we. We're pretty happy yeah. with what we have. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I haven't looked at the, the stats in a while. I like the idea. Other than that people download it occasionally. <laughs> people being Allison <laughs> on various devices. Yeah, that, that's probably accurate. <laughs> <sighs> and the people that I peer pressure to listen and submit questions. We do have a couple questions. Um, Good. Oh. That's what I was hoping would happen. They're not actually from me, I don't think, but no. I feel like I've... I mean, they don't have your name on them unless you've come up with pseudonyms. No, I'm not oh. that creative. I, I just claim that it's me. I don't... <laughs> Sauerkraut? Neither anyway. of them have to do with sauerkraut. Ah. That's maybe disappointing. <laughs> oh. They're they're I pretty could... good. They're pretty good questions, though. They're definitely very uh, binary jazzy. Binary. I, I I feel like I feel like the people that wrote them had a good understanding of of where our uh, talents are. <laughs> so, yeah, cryptozoology episode one zero. Wow, episode two. Yeah. You're like, no, I just said one zero. Pay attention. Oh, no, wait. Yes. Yeah. I can math. Binarily. 
The, the funny thing is a combination that, of binary that, and binarily. Binarily. Uh, the funny thing it would be binarily if I did it with both my ears. The funny thing is that I, I frequently find myself uh, in situations where I'm encountering the topics that uh, we discuss on binary jazz. There's a name for that. What is that called? Where you feel like you've encountered like a new topic that you were just exposed to multiple times after encountering it. Is that the topic today? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. I, I don't know what, but it would be something. It would be something. It would be that word. I think, I think, that, we, uh, I think that we defined a previous topic as being that thing at one point. Did we? Possibly. That sounds like that sounds like us. Yeah. It sounds it sounds like something that PFR alley. Yeah, I, I totally buy into that. But that's not this episode. This episode is about something else. What is this episode about? This episode is about what <laughs> it's about. We need to appreciate how beautiful that segue was. That was amazing. That never <laughs> happened. We should roll back and replay it. I I <laughs> I set them up, you knock them down. <laughs> Man. It's, it's almost like we know what we're doing. It's almost like I'm a professional, but not at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, except when you're a professional, you get paid for it. Yeah. As we established, no one's paying to hear us. No one's paying to hear us. Nope. Just lint, lint, lint in our pockets. But you can. You've got a donate button, I think, on the website somewhere. No, that's true. I will say, instead of donating to us, though, um, support your local food shelters while the government is not paying employees, please. Mm, that's a better idea. Unless you're in Canada, because your government is sane. In which case, <laughs> the support... Is shut down. Right. In which case, support... Um, Binary jazz. Organizations that are... Well, or, or homeless shelters. <laughs> if you're Canadian. If you're Canadian, pay us. And if you're American, go donate no. money to the food shelters. <laughs> Actually, if you're Canadian, can you share some of that social, uh, socialized health care? That seems pretty awesome. Just the, I mean, that can you just good. extend your border to Mexico? Yeah, maybe you could start annexing the northern border. Yeah, yeah that's just what I'm Just stop when it gets warm and I can move there. <laughs> of health care, I had a test done... And they got me my results in less than 24 hours. Like it was, like wow. I was, I did not, like they could have taken a few days and I would have been like, that's very reasonable. <laughs> like <laughs> the fact that I got a call the next morning, I was like, who's this? Oh, it's the doctor already. That's very <sighs> odd. Anyway, not to rub it Katie, in anyone's faces, but I was no, very cool. Katie broke her arm back in September. Um, we went to the ER. With a, that's what you do with a broken arm, I guess. Um, <laughs> then a week later, like we had to go. Out, like I guess it was four days later or something. We had to wait and get a cast put on. The mm -hmm. cast was on for six weeks. Cast was removed. And just yesterday, I got the bill in the mail from the ER. It's January. So, I guess they bill quarterly. Like, you know. Yeah, I don't like, know. I don't know. Fourth how. quarter and then send it. I, I mean, it's it's fine. It, the bill is what it is, but it was kind of weird that it took so long to get there. Can I take that one? Well, doesn't it, doesn't, it, doesn't it go through the insurance company first? And like, the, the, so they go and they they look at the insurance company and they pull money from the insurance company, and that needs to process and go through all their bureaucracy. And then when they get the final total, that's what they send to you, and so you get the thing after it's gone through the insurance. Isn't that why it takes so long? Or did well, it not do that stuff and it went straight to you anyway? Uh, well, this was like a, we have an ER copay and it was pretty clear on the insurance card that it was $200. So like, it was not like there was a great mystery as to what it was going to cost. I knew it was going to cost. I was ready to pay it that day, but. But you didn't? They didn't want it that. They didn't give me the option. They that's said, weird. we'll send you an invoice. I said, okay. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's as long as you're sending me home with the daughter I brought in and the arm that we brought in broken, like, I feel like I'm. Like, we'll settle up later. I'm fine with that. You're all right with it. It's worked by me. It's we weird did. that it went through well, all those filters. It. Yeah. Hmm. I, yeah, yeah usually, it just seems like they could have been like... Copay. Usually the copay stuff for us is is we pay it when we go there. And well, oftentimes and they'll do just, that. Yeah. yeah. And oftentimes they'll take, it, they'll, take your money, they'll take your money even when, like, you're not supposed to give the money. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, what is it normally? $200? Yeah, we'll take $200. Yeah, we'll take 
250? Yeah. yeah, we'll say 250. I, I don't frequent the ER, so I don't know if, if maybe this is normal or abnormal. Um, but I do feel like we'll visit the doctor, the copay, if the doctor's on that. You know, twenty dollars copay? Yes, you definitely owe that. And if you didn't owe it, like it'll eventually be applied to your account, like in six months or so, or whatever. I don't know. I should pay more attention, but the whole thing is just skeevy, you know. But you don't need to become an expert on paying or not paying when you're at the ER. That's not something you want to get really experienced at. The, the old ER. Compelling, that's a compelling argument. Maybe maybe I'm happy being ignorant in this case, <laughs> as in most cases, to be fair. <laughs> Which brings us to our topic this week. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're back again. <laughs> um, our topic this week is Senpaku. Who knows if I'm saying it right? Zenpaku? Sanpaku. S-A-N-P-A-K-U. Sanpaku. P-A-K-U. Okay. Yeah, it's Japanese. Uh, so I, yeah. With San. That's with At first I thought... I thought I thought in the first pronunciation I thought that it was going to be um, Spanish in origin, but it is clearly Japanese. Uh, Sanpaku is just the uh, vernacular uh, for um, the delivery service. So <laughs> it stems from like the early days of the postal service. Um, yeah, it's just delivery. I'm sitting see, in bird crap. See, <laughs> basically any. Japanese word could mean anything at all to me like there's I, I just there's no like it could be it could mean peanuts it could mean waffles it could mean the concept of being existing I, it could go, go back like to when your name is I like that part better it could be the process of uh, uh, personal discovery yeah, that. Yeah, uh, that you're sitting in front. I recently, I recently, and I've forgotten the name, of course, already. Um, uh, uh, Possible Octopus, our Etsy store, sold our first item, Yay. and it was a towel thing. Uh, and the person who bought it said that she was going to use it for this Japanese word that I uh, have forgotten already, which is uh, used used to describe the process of folding. Uh, fabric to create a pouch so if you think about like the old cartoons where you you, you put your your lunch in a, in a, a, a tablecloth essentially and you wrap it all up and you stick it to your stick there's a there's a japanese word for that of wrapping up your your food or your gifts or whatever and and folding it in a particular way so it becomes like a pouch and that's what she was going to use it for and so sanpaku I, could be that i don't think it is because i think it starts with a k but i mean it could be you're thinking of Sankapu. An um, I, I like I like the idea that it's a Japanese concept, but what if instead of being a Japanese concept, it's a Japanese place? I like the idea that it's a combination of all the things Chris listed off, like waffle delivery <laughs> concept of life. Like just but to to a place via folded fabric. Yeah. <laughs> there probably is a Japanese word for that, actually. Sanpaku. Uh, they're pro that's probably the Japanese word for waffle delivery via folded fabric to a, <laughs> a specific place. And it also gives you some sort of like life value, mm -hmm. conceptual notion of, of the meaning. Purpose. Yeah. Waff waffles well, are I purpose. I don't, I don't have any argument with that. <laughs> well, now I feel sad. No that waffles. That's also how I feel. <laughs> I was gonna say I feel sad that now like my the height of my like self purpose today is sitting under a tree in a podcast and then I'm gonna go back on the side and lay some more floor. Like that that's sounds, that's a pretty good purpose. Yeah. It sounds really productive. It feels really productive. <laughs> like, as compared to like web development where you can work on like a feature for several days or you know, you work on a feature and it doesn't actually make it to, you know, production for months. Like to lay floor and see like the room transform little by little throughout the day. It's super satisfying. And it's actually the thing you're you're walking on and like the foundation. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, my my fingers are already sore and my back and shoulders and I've got another day and a half of this, but uh, hard to beat that satisfaction. You can see the progress, which is like 
Yes. Not even my floor. Like, I'll do this and I probably won't ever see the floor again. But getting it down is going to be a big deal. Cover up the floor with various rugs and senpakus. <laughs> so, senpaku uh, is. It comes, uh, it, it comes from the three words san, pa, and ku. San, of course, means uh, self. And pa, of course, uh, means a father. And ku is obviously when a government is uh, taken over uh, by a, a foreign entity. So it is when you are the heir of a government that has been taken over by some hostile forces. Oh, I thought you were say government's taken over by your father. Wow. <laughs> well, you're the heir. You're the, you're the son or daughter of whoever Let's, is the leader of the government, and that person has been removed from power. Let's talk about the suffix ku. ku? It's clearly related to poetry. There's haiku and sanpaku. <laughs> These are the two kinds of poetry. Mm -hmm. Sanpaku is simply Japanese limericks. <laughs> They're generally dirty, but and that's just Japanese entertainment in general. So I don't know what you expected. <laughs> and haiku. Interesting. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. I, I like that. Interesting. Like, Interesting. I, like that was an out of hand dismissal, which is okay because I wasn't totally serious about it. But I just wish you would have called a spade a spade and been like, no, that's just like dumb reaching, which is okay. I mean, it was. <laughs> No, I, I, there might actually be something, something to the connection between haiku and sanpaku. There probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, if we're assuming that, uh, that is, of course, if sanpaku is, in fact, Japanese and not, like, I was just about to ask, like, Chinese or, or Taiwanese or... I don't think it would be, I, I don't think... Korean. I would be surprised if it was uh, Korean seems more likely to me. I'd be surprised if it's Chinese or Taiwanese, but it might be. I would also be surprised if it's related to poetry, but it might be. Um, but I was going to ask if we could explore for a minute, like if it were not, if we if we drop the presumption that it's Japanese, like if it if we drop the presumption that it was Japanese, Sanpaku would be a delightful fried fritter that it's a little it's a little fritter that is deep fried and uh sold as a street food and go and get your sanpaku with a really spicy uh spicy sauce <laughs> um that does sound lovely doesn't it <laughs> we're all clearly very more hungry than we're willing to acknowledge <laughs> i had a huge breakfast this morning thinking it doesn't matter once you start talking about waffles and deep fried senpaku it sounds yeah amazing. you're right yeah, i need a snack <laughs> what do you have a we, we have a discussion in my house about you know like the little six pack of crackers you can get from vending machines that usually have like fake cheese or <laughs> peanut butter or something inside right do you have a um, a word for that package of crackers? Crap. <laughs> yeah. It's the word that I give to that. But it, but but I mean that's not specific to that. Like you wouldn't be like, hey, can you grab me a package of crap? I wouldn't ask that question you under wouldn't, any you wouldn't ask that question. That's fair. But but I guess like regionally, is there is there a word for that? Because I found out that there is in North Carolina they call those. Oh, now they're now I'm gonna hose it. Nabs, nabs, I think. Nabs. No. Yeah. Yeah, I'd never heard that before. And Rhonda insisted. Yeah, pack of nabs. What? Yeah. Yeah. You've been married how long and you didn't know this about your wife? <laughs> it's not like we've had nabs in the house frequently in this marriage, you know? It was kind of a weird thing that she saw them and they were good for kids' lunches and I don't know. I don't I, know what I would call I mean, them at all. Like just crackers. A pack of crackers. Yeah. yeah. I, would I think crackers. crackers, yeah. I would too. I was surprised that there was a word for them. And I was wondering if maybe I just missed that part of reality and everyone knew this but me i um, know that that utah is a pop state as opposed to minnesota and this yeah, is in the south it's coke Even yeah it's well coke, it's california was i mean i always, i grew up i grew up uh calling soda coke my entire life up until the point where i said coke in front of the pepsi executives so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's just that's just what it was so coming to to uh 
to Utah where it was quite definitely and distinctly pop. And I was being asked if I wanted pop and I had to like, what? And, yeah. and to me, like, I, so I used to watch 1950s television uh, during the day as a child growing up. And there was one uh, show. I don't even remember what it was. To be clear, you were not a child in the 50s. No, just, I just watched 1950s yeah. television. I, I just wanted to make sure that we were yeah. clear on that in case people weren't. Because skincare were regime only. is yeah. immaculate. <laughs> well, there might be some audio only listeners, right? So true. I don't want them to think that. <laughs> This is when we find out Chris is really in his 90s. Yeah. <laughs> God, don't make me feel it's that. It's that gluten-free vegan lifestyle. Yeah, it is. That's what <laughs> that would only put him in his 70s. Oh, no, I guess 80s? Maybe uh, not 80s. I was thinking 80s, but... Anyway, <laughs> uh, there's some show that I was watching uh, where I guess it was this... It's like, I don't know, like some, some like horror fantasy of, of the 1950s dad where he's imagining his daughter... Uh, having a boyfriend and the boyfriend's coming over and he walks in and he says, hiya, pop. And ever since then, ever since then, I referred to my grandfather as pop. So moving to Utah and somebody asked me for pop, my immediate recollection is my grandfather. And I'm at wondering why they're asking me about my grandfather <laughs> until I realized that pop is also a word for soda. And you're like, I'm not in need of my grandfather. Yeah, right? no, I, no, he's fine. Well, I mean, he's not fine, but <laughs> he's dead. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I don't actually know if your grandfather's dead, but he is now. Yes, he wasn't at the time. I, just, I hope I didn't kill him by that statement. He is now. Wow. <laughs> Word, is... Words have power, people. Do not forget. <laughs> my grandfather is presently deceased. At the time of the initial question of whether I would like pop, he was not. Is that enough clarity? The power of manifestation is real, though, Gary. Don't doubt it. Yeah, that's oh, the Sanpaku. This is so much pressure. Sanpaku <laughs> is when you say somebody is dead and they instantly drop dead. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks, yeah. It's like, it's very similar to seppuku. Right, except that's self. Yeah, so this is others. others. Yeah. <sighs> So wait, so wait, so wait. We've got haiku. Yep. We got seppuku. Seppuku. Right. I don't know how to pronounce it. Both of those end with ku. Maybe ku means self. But haikus are not about self. Haikus are about like stuff, nature, <laughs> like the world. Like your. Well, I guess it is about you, right? Your experience of the world. Hmm. Maybe I should pay better attention to what haikus are about. Can we pause for a minute and take a small sidebar? <clears throat> the first website I built like for fun for myself was a website called Haiku Fish. Um, this was- I don't know what a haiku is. I, I knew it, the, the technical American definition, right? 575. Um, and so, well, okay, so that's really a haiku which existed for a while. And we had like a daily haiku for the better part of uh, two years. On the website? Friends. Yeah, yeah. You, anybody could submit them. And then um, if I didn't happen to get on to select one, it would randomly pick one based on people who had had the highest like votes in the past. It was, oh. it was a silly system. And I mean, not highly trafficked because if it had been more than like three or four users at a time, it probably would have come down with the, the load on how horribly coded it was. Um, but... But yeah, it was uh, it was like totally, I even would call it a CMS. Like it was totally like logic I rolled on my own and you used like your Facebook ID to log in. And I think that what ultimately killed it for me was like eight or nine years ago thinking like Facebook was pretty awful and I didn't want people to have to log in. So I just kind of let it languish and then I didn't renew the domain and that was the end of it. Um, but it had some weird Japanese characters and border on it. This was back in the days when I would also try and like attempt front end as well. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was interesting times. I like I like the part uh, of that story where you said eight or nine years ago you thought that Facebook was horrible. You were an early uh, adopter of that idea. <laughs> I was that eight or nine years ago. I saw Facebook as a necessary evil. I still kind of do. Because so I think my last like 
the, the entire know. internet is on Facebook. Yeah, I, I, I was my Facebook usage was was sort of dying off as I was realizing how awful it was as as Rana was pregnant with Tyler, who is now eight, um, eight and a half ish, um, and I, one of my last few updates uh, was like about like how exciting it was to hear his heartbeat for the first time. Mm. And then I think shortly after that, I posted about, do you remember that show, the, uh, not the voice? Um, what was the show with the acapella singers? I don't know. I mean, very corporate TV, uh, yes, probably NBC. Glee? No, um, it doesn't matter. It, I made some like stupid joke about like, watch this show. It's my Christmas present to you. And that was it. And that was kind of, I think that's my last Facebook thing. Now I say this, like thinking that's the case. Someone's going to like go and look at my account and be like, you're a liar. Like, I, I don't remember. I haven't been there a long time. I, I, hope, to, our, I hope our loyal listeners do that to your Facebook account. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I wouldn't know. I have no, I mean, I wouldn't know. I, I, I will say um, quickly though, that I, I have to keep it open because there's so many times you have to write like against yeah. the Facebook API and you need a freaking account for yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. why that's that's why that and the fact that I um, I mean, we have a possible Octopus Facebook page and in order to manage it and maintain it. And I, I, I mean, I feel like I need to because it's, there's there's no way anyone's going to find our stuff other than basically social media. So. Yeah, um, so it has to be there. I My last uh, my last Facebook post, I believe I'm, I don't think I've gone back and, and done anything since then. Um, I've used Messenger. I've used and you know, I've used it for for other things, but I haven't posted to my own thing. Mm. Um, was after the there is that survey thing that went around for a while, and it was like a personality test, and then it was revealed later that by participating in that, you are sharing all of your data and also all of the data belonging to everyone associated with you, with the company that was just harvesting all this data. And I was like, that's it, dude, I'm out. Because I did that, I did the test, and I saw friends who did the test, and then I, and, and Aaron did the test, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, like, I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm possibly sharing, I mean, I don't care about my own data. I know my own data is out there. I don't wanna share all the people I know's data, any platform that allows that, even accidentally, even when it's being abused is not something that I want to participate in anymore. So I basically said, yep, see ya, this happened. Um, I'm not, I'm removing myself from this situation. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I feel like I would like to opt out of it in an, a, in an ideal world, but then there's like three cousins once removed that it's the only way to contact them on and then tech stuff. Yeah, I, I I leave Messenger open. I mean, I leave it on my phone. I, I leave that available because I figure that's, but I don't, I mean, I, it, yeah, I, I miss out on, on the people stuff, but I still, I mean, I'm going to be. So, so here's my usage of family, Messenger. But... Whenever there's like some kind of family crisis, my parents will text me and be like, can you install Messenger? We need to get you in the loop on what's going on. And then I install Messenger and I'm involved in the conversations for whatever's happening. And then after things are settled down, I delete it and um, go back and go back to normal existence. That's nice. Yeah, so I, I mentally associate Messenger with like bad news. Hmm. So anyway, Messenger is the Facebook Messenger is the only way that my biological mother count, communicates with me because I don't think she knows my phone number, um, and she doesn't like write letters. So every once in a while, she'll send me a, a ping on on Facebook Messenger, and then I have to like evaluate how I feel about that. Oh, so it's like, yeah, so Facebook is like loaded emotions for both yeah. of them. It's like very layered in ways that it's like beyond the normal evilness of Facebook. Yeah. There's like just so many other emotional layers. And that is, uh, in essence, Sanpaku. So, so what layers. is it now? Yeah, so now, we're, now we can actually find out what it really is. We're at the, we're the part of the show where we realized that it wasn't Japanese at all, right? <laughs> No, it is. It is. Um, Where you go, Chris? Nice poll. <laughs> it's a, a Japanese term, and it means three whites. Um, but it's generally in reference to eyes. So if your eyes have white space above or below the iris, like if it's visible, um, 
and it's associated with kind of like an old wives tale for lack of a better term of like if you have that then um you're a little off <laughs> um so people will analyze to see if you have <laughs> now you're checking out right um it was, it was unsuccessful i couldn't tell so, so yeah so someone has sent senpaku eyes um, it often means that something in their system is out of balance, um, supposedly. Um, so this is not even, a, I wouldn't even call this a soft science as far as. Well, theory. there's a lot of weird, there's a lot of weird stuff like blood type plays into relationship uh, compatibility in, in Japanese culture, which is, yeah. So like you want a girl who's like this horoscope, who is like this, and she's also this blood type. Because blood type, they believe that blood type influences um, uh, your personality. So, so to clarify, with the with the three whites, it's like this white, this white, and then like up above my eye. Mm -hmm. Like it can be above or, or below, below, depending. Okay, I'm gonna start watching anime with that in mind and see if all the villains that are a little bit off have have some pocket. I want to well, say something about blood type. Go for it. Say something about blood type. For a very long time, and I donated blood, I don't know, a couple years ago. And, uh, and they were like, oh, you're A positive. And I was so happy to hear that. It just was like such a silly thing. But I like saying like, I'm a positive guy. Like that's, I don't know. It really, really made me happy to be like a walking dad joke. A positive, but not RH null. Yeah. No, not to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. I think at this point in my life, I'd probably know. Hopefully. Well, if the, yeah, if you had to be identified already. So, uh, we're at the point, I believe, when we can get to listener questions. Yay! Uh, we'll start with, let's see, we'll go in order of, of submission, I suppose. Uh, Trevor asks, what's the most dangerous job in the world? Now, I feel like there probably is a, an actual answer to this, but I'm going, to, I'm going to hypothesize that the most dangerous job in the world is an electric chair tester. <laughs> that does seem pretty awful. I, I will also suggest that Trevor, by virtue of like, finding the question box on the website, means he's listened to several episodes um, and, and would assume that uh, he's not looking for the uh, correct answer. Entertaining answer. So with that, electric chair tester seems to be right up there. Um, I don't know. I think that the unsung heroes of fast food, the people have to make the French fries. <laughs> that grease could catch fire at any second. So that's horrifying. <laughs> and they're just right there with grease splattering. It's a rough gig. And then, and then they get this this crazy order from the president of the United States, where they have to make like <laughs> a thousand fries. And I mean, like, who's going to be able to, like, you don't make a thousand fries in a day and you have to do it for the president. I mean, come on. That's, that's rough. I had to pick up like six dozen boxes of donuts for WordCamp Jacks last year. And that was like, I walked in and like, I was buying donuts for the president. You want how many dozen? Six. Can they be assorted? Uh, that would be ideal. Yes. Okay. It's going to take us a few minutes. Is it going to take that much longer than like taking six individual people that wanted a dozen donuts like this? <laughs> you don't you don't sell six dozen donuts like on a Saturday morning like already? Just, I don't know. It, it it didn't seem like that many donuts to be so concerning. Still a little sour on that. No sour cream donuts for me. I'm thinking. I'm still thinking. My first thought of for most dangerous job had something to do with sharks. But I don't, <laughs> Like I feel sharks. like that's a complete answer. I don't think you need to go any further. <laughs> Something with sharks. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a valid Anything argument. to do with sharks? I mean, there's, there's the person that, that goes into the shark tanks at, at, uh, at aquariums and, and feeds the sharks. Yeah. Usually like, they're actually in the tank with them and they're like waving around a piece of meat. Like the chum holder. That seems like the dangerous job. <laughs> So maybe that maybe the counterpart that works um, at um, like an alligator farm, like the alligator. Yeah. But it's and it's probably not the the manager. It's like the assistant feeder. 
<laughs> no, no, person. no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you have to like move up the totem pole to be the person that directs the person that feeds you. Yeah, exactly, because the person's just like, okay, I've now drop the food are. in. Yeah, no, 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 the... it's all about technique. Get that arm closer to that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> bend the elbow, bend the elbow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lift with the knees, not the back. <laughs> oh, goodness. Maybe, yeah, maybe so... an Amazon warehouse worker. Oh no, now we're getting, we're getting more dark again. Are we getting dark again? Sorry, I forget I said that. Are there more questions? Because you can get buried in boxes? What, and what... I don't, I, I feel like they, that OSHA, that, that Amazon is exempt from OSHA. They bought off that department or something. They own that. Ah, okay. So OSHA is like, you know. So oh, no well, or you can be crushed by a robot. I thought we were getting off this topic. What's the next question? Uh, the next Maybe. question, I don't think we can, we can answer in less than a minute. Any job where you get crushed by a robot is the most dangerous job. That's true. That's true. So robot construction officer. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the, um, that's the thing um, with uh, um, like the early days in Detroit, right? Like unions were important because production of automobiles was dangerous as heck. Yeah, I guess I wasn't formulating them as robots in my mind. But you're right. Well, and even like the, the newer robots that do like, you know, gesturing and stuff. I don't, not gesturing, but they're not like the, the factory line workers or anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, after you, buddy, I'll put this head in without you. I hate when they wave at me. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> There's a great factory tour in Detroit uh, where they make the F-150 that is just absolutely fascinating. Um, they're making... Like a truck a minute is what rolls off the line there. And you go, well, that seems like a bold plane until you see them do it and you go, oh, well, I see how they do that. It's, it's pretty fascinating. I don't know if a truck a minute sells to justify that, but I, I don't really care either. It's not my problem to know. It's not my problem. I went to uh, a record pressing plant in Nashville when I was there last year. And that was a pretty- That sounds so much cooler than the F-150. Yeah. <laughs> It's, they they talked about how they make like the marbled uh, special colored vinyl. And the Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.